This book is called The Staircase Cat. Um, it's another book that I had when I was a kid. It's got really beautiful illustrations. Um, it's actually quite a serious story. I don't think I really took it in that much as a child. But it's set, you know, during the war and it's quite sad, you know. It's quite heavy for a child. But I think it's just lovely as well. So, I don't know. I still really like it. Um, and, yeah, as I said, as a, as a kid, I didn't really um, feel the weight of it. I focused more on the cat than the actual story, I think. Um, and it's such a lovely cat. And I love, I love the way he's drawn. He's just beautiful. So this is the staircase cat. <coughs> the staircase cat. There were ghosts in the house. The old cat could feel them, and sometimes on moonless nights he could see them too. The ghosts of men and women and children who had once lived in the house. The ghosts of their cats and dogs moved in and out of the deserted rooms, but there was no peace for them among the fallen plaster and broken glass. In the empty basement, the old cat turned round in his box and tried to sleep. On the street above, people walked by in the cold night air. Their voices floated down the shaft and their shoes clattered on the pavement, reminding the cat of the time when the building had been full of real people. They had lived at every landing, families with children, families with grandparents and families with cats and dogs. The whole place had poured over with people. It had been alive and full of voices and laughter. The air had been heavy with the smells of life and the flavour of a hundred dinners. But now they were all gone and there was only silence and dust. The building had been a place that cats dream of and the old cat had been the king. In the back basement, the caretaker had lived with his family and behind the stove, in a warm wooden box, the same box he still slept in, the cat had been born. Can you put this one here with the stripes? His brothers and sisters had gone to other homes, but he had stayed, at first with his mother and then alone. He remembered the caretaker's daughter going away and hearing the first bombs fall off far off across the city. The girl had been kind to him and he missed her. It all seemed so long ago. The busy streets had grown quiet. The bombing had stopped and then the tanks had come, bringing new noises that drowned out laughter. The smells had changed too. The richness had gone out of them. The air had grown thin and so had the cat. There's no food for cats now, said the caretaker. You'll have to find your own. It was worse for the dogs. They couldn't hunt like cats. While cats caught mice and rats, the dogs scratched around the dustbins and survived the best they could. The caretaker's wife did scraps for the cat, but one day that stopped too. That was the day the soldiers came. They went through the building, ordering everyone into the street. When they had gone, there were only nine people left. The caretaker and his wife were not among them. From that day on, the house and the street were as quiet as the grave. A week later, the ghosts start, started coming. For three years it was like that. The lights went out and the water stopped. The last sticks of furniture smouldered in the fireplaces. The last people moved away and cobwebs grew across the doors. As the cat grew older, more and more ghosts came. They seemed unable to see the cat. They could barely see each other. From time to time, when the winter winds blew snow through the broken windows, tramps came to the house and the ghosts could see them. The tramps could see the ghosts too and never stayed long. Then there were more bombs, nearer than last time, so near that the houses across the street disappeared. New soldiers marched through the streets and then there was silence followed by rats, thousands of them. 
They poured out of the sewers in waves, sweeping through the derelict city like a dark tide. The cat grew fat and the rats grew thin. Spring came, and across the street flecks of green appeared in the rubble. Behind the house, the forgotten garden grew tall with grass, and the birds returned. As the air grew warm again, people began to come back too. They cleared the streets and rebuilt the shattered houses. The cat waited for the people to come back to his house. On either side, windows were replaced, doors were painted, roofs were made watertight. <coughs> And once again, music soaked through the halls, the walls, but no one came to his house. Every day, the old cat climbed the stairs, past the open apartment doors, up to the attic. There were swallows nesting in the deserted rooms near the watermarked ceilings. The birds swooped through the broken windows so fast, the cat expected to see them die on the jagged edges of glass. But they had keen eyes and never missed their mark. The streets grew busier with new children and traffic, but still the old building stood empty while all the others bustled with life. The cat sat on a third floor window sill and watched the children playing below him. For the first time in his life he felt lonely. He had forgotten the comfort of sitting by a fire, of sitting on someone's lap and being stroked. He had even forgotten his name and realised there was probably no one left who knew what it was. Then it all changed. It was midsummer and the old cat was far away in his dreams in the afternoon sunshine. He thought the noises were part of his dream, but then he woke up and the noises were still there. There were people in the house. They were echoing in the empty rooms below. And as they came up the stairs, the cat realised he was trapped. It was too high to jump down, and before he could think of anything else to do, the people were coming through the door. There was a young woman and a young man. Oh, look, said the man, there's a cat on the window sill. It's just like Oscar, said the woman. Then the old cat remembered his name, Oscar. He jumped back into the room and rubbed around the woman's legs. She had a comforting smell, like a long-lost memory. It is Oscar, said the woman, after all these years. It was the caretaker's daughter. When Oscar had last seen her, she had been a child. Now she was a woman, but each human has their own scent, and he knew it was her. He must be ancient, said the man. Over fifteen, said the woman, picking Oscar up. Come on, old cat, we'll take you home. She carried him down into the basement and showed her husband the little room where she had slept. They found Oscar's box and carried it out to their car. All those years, said the woman, I can hardly believe it. All those years with the ghosts. The end. Yeah. Really nice book. A bit sad, but I really like it. The Staircase Cat